I'm ready for some sunshine. Amen. Uh, Amen. Let's uh, turn to number 19. Sing all three verses. Come thou most mighty King, help us thy name to sing, help us to faith, glorious, glorious, come and over us, ancient of days, come thou in this word, gird on thy mighty good, our prayer unto Come and bring him and in holiness, spirit of holiness, and O Lord our God, to thee the highest praises be. It's heaven, O Lord, in majesty, may we in glory see. And in eternity, Lord, and above. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Praise it, the Redeemer, worthy of glory, humble and power, worthy of all souls and creation, worthy art thou, worthy art thou, worthy of riches, blessings and honor, worthy of glory, worthy of power. Worthy of earth and heaven's thanksgiving. Worthy art thou, worthy art thou. Lord, may we come for thee with singing. Filled with thy spirit, and power. May we ascribe thee glory and honor. Worthy art thou, worthy art thou, worthy of riches and honor, worthy of wisdom and power, worthy of earth and heaven's thanksgiving, worthy art thou, worthy art thou. Amen. If you would mark number 947. Well, it's good to be back this morning after last Sunday and all the snow that we had. Uh, some of us old timers remember 1951 when we had a uh, bad winter. I think we, well, I probably missed about two weeks of cool, maybe part of three. I don't know, but. Uh, it came in different forms. I mean, first of all, the last 1951, there was a sleet, a light layer of sleet, and wait a few days, and then it snowed on top of that. You wait a few days, and it started sleeting, and then after that, a few days, then it started raining. The rain started freezing, and uh, so it's uh, 1951. If you talk, talk to anybody, 1951 was bad. Uh, this time, of course, so it, it's, when it snowed, it, we had we had some awful cold weather, uh, single digit uh, temperatures. I think maybe one morning it might have been minus two. But uh, I've been up here forty seven years, and I've never missed a week's work. But all week long, I have a hill in front of my house, and it was frozen over all week long. I made a picture of it on about a third day, I believe it was. And uh, it was Sunday before it even started melting. It got to 27, and it was Sunday before it started uh, melting. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Week's work, mm -hmm. and on Monday morning, I called work and asked him if I could wait till 10 o'clock mm -hmm. and have a chance to melt. So what it did, made it just fine. And I had a, had a good week this week, and I hope that you did too. Amen. Uh, on Wednesday of this past week, I visited with David and Joyce. They were at Southern Hills. Mm -hmm. At that time, and since that time, she's been uh, transferred to 
uh, Advanced uh, Health uh, Center mm. over on 19th. And uh, hopefully, I'm hoping maybe that uh, we'll be able to see them in two or three weeks. I Amen. Hope she makes that much much improvement. I, I just believe that uh, she's going to be all right. I Amen. hope they don't mind. Uh, Facebook uh, asked all of my brethren and friends to have prayer for her. Amen. And uh, some of you may have, may have seen that, but uh, I just hope that I told them, I said, I just hope maybe two or three weeks that uh, they'll be back with us. I hope so. Amen. Good to have the young men that Hiram brought with us this morning. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. They've been here before. <laughs> oh, yes. Good to have them with us. So this, this morning, I want to talk about why don't we preach the gospel and leave everybody else Real man. Well, I Hold on, Brother Bruce. I didn't get that part. Can you say it again for me? I'm sorry. I'm I'm Okay. Go for it. Okay, I want to talk about speak on the subject this morning. Why don't you leave the uh, preach the gospel and leave everybody else alone? All right. Well you just can't do it. I mean I, I, I know that <laughs> right. you can be long suffering and and uh, polite and nice to everybody, and, mm -hmm. and we all we ought to. Mm -hmm. As uh, Second Timothy chapter uh, two and verse twenty four says, and it points it out. Mm -hmm. It says, "And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient." Amen. And so that's something that we should keep in mind. Preach the truth in love. Jesus preached love. Amen. He taught it, in, but, he, but he also rebuked people. Yes. And uh, I want to go to Second uh, Timothy on the same opening in my Bible. In Second Timothy uh, chapter 4, and begin reading a few verses. I have to have much Brother Rick to word us in our prayer. This Amen. Morning. But we want to be gentle. We want to be nice. We want to be nice to people. But yet when we see things that are being done wrong, we need to point them out. It is our responsibility. Amen. And Paul told the Ephesian elders in Acts chapter 20 and about verse 27, I believe it is, that I've not come to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Uh, Paul was uh, confident that he had done what he was he's supposed to do. But I want to read, listen, I want you to listen to these words uh, that Paul wrote Timothy. Timothy was a young preacher. And he wrote this second letter. He probably knew that uh, the time of his execution was at hand. And so he wrote this fourth, uh, I mean, this uh, second letter in chapter four. And, and listen to it. I think that I will all prove my point when I read this to you because it shows that all the things that we are supposed to do. Amen. He says, I charge thee, that's in uh, chapter uh, four, beginning with verse one. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. He says, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but shall heap to their own lust uh, them to, to themselves teachers having each year. Amen. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, mm -hmm. endure afflictions, and do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I'm ready, now ready to be offered in the time of my departure at hand. So Paul makes it plain to them exactly Amen. what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not that we should, we should kind of, kind of, uh, Reprove and rebuke, but at the same time exhort. Amen. With all long suffering and doctrine. Amen. Now I don't think a preacher should get up here every Sunday and point out things that are wrong and displeasing every Sunday and do that because that is reproving and rebuking. Mm -hmm. But it must be missed with the the patience and the, uh, the long suffering along with it. Yes. We must be kind and gentle. I think the Lord would, would have us to be that way. But He says, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. That is, regardless of what high people feel, regardless of who you're speaking to, you must preach the word. Be instant, in season, and out of season. There's one of my preacher friends said, preach it when they want it, and preach it when they don't want it. All right, now. But uh, now I want to ask Brother Rick, if he will, to word us in our prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for last night's laying down in this morning for us. Thank you for blessing us all to make it here this morning, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we pray for our, those that are sick, those that are shut in. Yes. We pray for the homeless and the mentally ill. Yes. And we pray for all of you, Heavenly Father. Yes. To uh, 
draw them to the Church of Christ and help them, Heavenly Father, get out of simple ways. Yes. We pray for the adults also, yes. the same thing. And we pray for those high prison bars, juvenile, adult jail, adult prison, male, female. We pray they don't reoffend. Pray they turn to you, Heavenly Father. Yes. Heavenly Father, we pray for this country we live in, that mankind will turn to you and stop all the, uh, put down a weapon, stop all the robbing and killing. Amen. Pray you bring peace in Palestine and Israel, all of them. Yes, Israel. yes. We pray to protect our troops. They're over there in harm's way. And uh, we pray that mankind will see the error of the way. And uh, we pray for the churches of Christ, it's a small church of Christ in Jerusalem, in that area. Pray to continue to protect them. They yes. be safe. We pray that mankind will see that everything he's doing now is wrong. Mm. And we just pray, Heavenly Father, that you prick mankind's heart. Yes. We're so thankful for this day. we most thankful the best gift you ever gave mankind, your son Jesus. Amen. And we pray for our brothers and sisters of faith out there following over years. Some fall away now that you've drawn back before it's too late. And we just thank for this day and just thank for Brother Bruce and Brother Ron. This is a blessing. Get over here every morning and yes. open this building and uh, for us to have service. We pray for Brother David and Sister Joyce for health and well being. Yes. And we just thank for this day, Heavenly Father. Give us all of our sin shortcomings and the end savers. This best in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Rick, for that good sermon. You always do a good job, and I appreciate Brother James and uh, Hiram and all of you who do lead this prayer. You do, do a wonderful job. We need to pray. This is part of our, a part of our worship service. Yes. The two main things that we should do is to pray and study the Word of God. Amen. We show ourselves approved of the God, as Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, that we might know how to write and divide the Word of truth. Amen. I like that verse that I read just a few months ago. The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle uh, to all men, out to teach, and patient. Amen. That's part of that, that. That's almost it in a nutshell. Yes. But then, of course, as I read, I've just read to you that in, in chap chapter 4, he said, I charge thee. In other words, Timothy, I, I, want, I want you to know exactly. Timothy probably already knew. But he said, I want you to know what you're supposed to do. And you're supposed to preach the word. Don't preach philosophy or the current events or anything like that, but preach the word. The word is to be preached. Amen. And he said, uh, he go, goes on to say, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. Yes. That's what I, I mentioned a while ago before the prayer, and that is that the preaching when they want it and when they don't want it. Mm -hmm. But he mentioned several different uh, characteristics or facts about it and everything, and he says, of course, to, to reprove. Mm -hmm. That is to express disapproval of the actions of people. That's right. When we think, see things, when we see people that are doing wrong, we must prove, point out to them where they're doing wrong. And uh, that's mm -hmm. the only way that they will know for some reason that they're negligent or something. Uh, and so we need to point out to them in, in disapproval of what, what is taking place. Mm -hmm. That is part of it. Mm -hmm. And it says review. That is a stronger word than reprove. Yes, right. And that, of course, is that we're supposed to, to re rebuke. Mm -hmm. That is to reprimand, and we must speak with authority about mm. things that are take, taking place. It is the responsibility of the preacher, the, uh, the word of God is that he point out the things that people are doing wrong and the things that they're doing right. Right. That must uh, that must go hand in hand, but rebuke is rebuking is a part of it. If I see if you see something people are doing something wrong, then it is <coughs> that is your responsibility to point out to That's them right. that they're doing something wrong. Reprove and rebuke. But then he goes on to say exhort. Mm. Exhort ex Exhortation comes along with it. That is, we're supposed to exhort. That Amen. is, to point out the good things. Yes. You know, when uh, Jesus in Re Re book of Revelation chapter 2 and 3, when he pointed out the wrongs of those uh, seven churches, he said, now, I have this, I want to say this about you. And he talked about the good things. Every one of them, he talked about the good and about how I know that I works. Uh, but then he said, nevertheless, I have this against thee, and he pointed out things that are wrong. Mm -hmm. And so it is responsibility, or was responsibility of Jesus to point those things out. They were doing things wrong, and Jesus wanted, <coughs> wanted them to know that they're doing wrong. Amen. I think that's a good
good of the Lord that he would point out the good things and the bad things. We're not perfect. Right. We'll never be perfect, but we must strive on to perfection. Amen. We must never be content with the way things are with our Christian life, but we must improve. And as I said just a few months ago, prayer and, and Bible reading go hand in hand. Amen. It is our responsibility to talk to God. God is our Father in heaven. Yes. And we should at all yes. times uh, talk to him. Yes. And we must exhort one another. I remember Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. <laughs> Is not forsaking of the shed of some heart, but to uh, be long suffered, be to to be not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, man of some is. Look, Amen. looking forward to that day, as he says. I'm probably kind of paraphrasing that. You got it. You got it. But but anyway, the, we are to encourage one another to promote one another unto good works, as uh, Paul, Paul said. And so, exhortation goes along with it. When I see somebody, and I know I'm not perfect, I don't claim to be, but when I see somebody doing something that's good, of course, I try to, uh, um, I try to encourage people along the way. I'm not a Barnabas. Barnabas was a son of consolation. He was the one that, when Paul came to Jerusalem, he was the one that uh, introduced uh, uh, Paul to the uh, church in Jerusalem. Paul was a missionary of the Gentile. Then, then he goes on to say, with all, with all long suffering. Amen. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, uh, Peter points out that God is long suffering, just will not willing that any should perish, but Amen. the all should come to repentance. Amen. And so we must be patient, be yeah. long suffering. And that, of course, is, is a part of it. You know, God, God, Jesus never gives up on anyone. Amen. He, always, he can use us in the kingdom, regardless of the mistakes that we've made in the past. We yes. must turn from them. That's a part of repentance. We must uh, turn from those mistakes that we have made in the past and and to improve. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an improve. We, we should always try to improve ourselves as we walk down the journeys of life. God was long-suffering. He was long-suffering to uh, Apostle Peter. Prior to Jesus' crucifixion, Peter was the one that denied him. And the Lord told Peter that, uh, Peter said, oh, I'll go with you through all these things, you know, Lord. And he said, this he will rebuke me thrice. And he did it three times. But yet, uh, Jesus had, <coughs> had something in mind uh, for Paul, Peter, and he never, uh, he never forgot that. But in regards to what Peter did, of course, he... Uh, he, he had him, Peter, to preach the first gospel sermon. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Almost might have been this morning, I was tickling in my throat. <laughs> Me too. Can't get rid of it. <laughs> but anyway, it's the time of the year, I guess, and all. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, Paul, Jesus was long trusting to Peter, and that he had he had uh, uh, had denied him three times, but he was the one to preach the first gospel sermon. And so as, as our lesson teaches us today, as the Bible points out, that we are to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Why, Paul, why do you do this? Because he said the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but he right. to them self teachers having each years. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of Isaiah. In Isaiah uh, chapter 30, verses 10 through 11. The people said, speak to us smooth things. Amen. <laughs> right. They want to hear the things that are good. Right. That's, that's natural. I, I, <laughs> I, I can understand that. But at the same time, uh, we can't do that. Right. But we must speak the truth. The truth will correct. And as Paul, as Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And it's proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that a man of God might be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. <laughs> Amen. <coughs> Amen. Therefore, we must study the Word of God, and we must uh, do the things that the Bible commands us to do. We have that responsibility. If you know someone is doing wrong, and do not point that out to them, you don't want them to stand in the day of judgment and say, Bruce, I knew you knew that I was doing wrong and you never said a word to me about it. Amen. You never said anything about it. Go on and preach it. And I want to mention in, in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. 
where he, he points out. And I mean, they, they were in the brink of going into captivity. Uh, God tried to warn them that that was what was going to happen. And they, they didn't do it. They didn't correct their ways. They had perverted the, the, what God has said, what they had been taught, and they had done wrong. And, of course, God punished them because <coughs> of what they had done. But in paraphrasing this, he said, he, he says, if you see your brother doing something wrong and you correct him and he doesn't, uh, he doesn't heed to what you have to say, uh, your soul will be spared because you've done what you're supposed to do. But on the other hand, if you see him doing something wrong uh, and you go ahead and correct him and he, he does uh, change his ways, then thou hast delivered thy soul. What are you saying, he thinker? You, by you being a friend and, and, and admonishing your friend who has done something wrong, you save him, you have delivered your soul. We are responsible. I mean, Cain uh, asked a question in the long ago when uh, God asked him about Abel. Where's Abel? Hmm. Amen. Go and see it. Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? All right. Yes, we are our brother's keeper. I Amen. That's self-evident. Yes. That we, we are our brother's keeper. We're responsible for one another as we work dirty down the path of life and help to encourage one another. All of us need encouragement from time to time. Amen. All of us need the help of our brother from time to time. And James mentioned in James chapter 5 and verse 19. Confess your faults, one another, for the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man abated much. John, in, in his letter, uh, he said, well, My little children, I write these things unto you that you sin not. But if any man does sin, he has an advocate for the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. There's one mediator between God and man. And that is Jesus Christ. I think that's in First Timothy chapter um, <coughs> two. And well, anyway, I didn't intend to use that, but there's one. That's okay. Five, you got it. Two is verse five. You got it. But but anyway, uh, it's good to have this opportunity for us to come together. You to be commended for uh, coming out and uh, being with us from Sunday to Sunday. Grateful. And you know when we meet, we are the Ron has has uh, picked out a song for the session. And uh, we encourage you, if you're subject to the invitation in any way, we invite you to come. While together we stand and while we stand. <coughs> Jesus is tenderly calling the hope, calling today, calling today. Why from the suffering, the roam, farther and farther away. Calling day to day, calling day to day. Jesus is tenderly, tenderly calling today. I have a uh, confession and need prayer. Uh, I, I was not planning this at all. But um, I don't know what the Lord going to let me say, but the first thing I want to say is that I make my confession that I've sinned, I've wronged, i made mistakes, and sometimes, in my opinion, I have embarrassed the church and I always ask for prayer. I've been doing this since 198, from 1984 to 2023. And from 1984 to 2023, when I do this, some people have judged me as being the crazy people. And then, I'm going to say this. The Lord put it on my heart to say, and then in 2020, somewhere around there, no, a little bit after 2020, then some people accusing me of being a Satan worshiper. And most everybody knows I'm not a Satan worshiper. I work hard for Jesus, almost 24-7. Everybody knows this about me, everybody around the world, but then they got a few punch, little, little people going to say me and my mother are Satan worshipers. I don't want anybody to say that. I know. As it, I'm going to tell you, and the Lord told me, keep your mouth shut, Hiram, because seeing that can tear up the church. But he told me just now, let it be known. I'm not the crazy people. I'm doing what the Bible says to do. The Bible says, come before your brothers and sisters. The fervent, the fervent prayers of the righteous avail as much. I'm doing what the Bible says to do. I'm coming for you, the church, and asking for prayer. But I love it here 
Because among this group, sometimes when he's back in the old days, to say the night service is the real church. Y'all remember him saying that? The night service, that's the real church. Right here is the real church. Amen. Amen. But I want y'all to pray for these men right here. Hold on. These little boys right here, they're not boys no more. They, they men. I don't tell you why they men. Because they making decisions that grown people make. They make decisions and knowing that they love Jesus and they're ready to put on Christ in baptism. I just want to say it and prayers for my family. It's been a rough week. My mother failed, but she got back up and now she's cooking and sewing again. We had a cousin. She had a seizure. And then she, the next morning, Saturday morning, they called me. She done passed away. Supposed to have a cook, uh, service down at Carmack Boulevard Church of Christ. It's a lot going on in this world. It's a lot going on. I'll tell you, I'm not the crazy people. I go out here street preaching, giving food, medicines, everything free. That's, that's, that's the work of the church. That's putting God first. That's not crazy. She, she's standing too. I'm sorry. Takes them places for a reason and a season. 